Grace and peace unto you, my brothers and sisters. In case you've forgotten, I'm Father Tony. People seem to really like these movie reviews, so here's another one for you. New movie out uh, just today called Exodus Gods and Kings, a Ridley Scott joint. It's about Moses. You probably knew that. It's called Exodus. Kind of has the whole thing in the title. Going to start out right off the bat by acknowledging that there's been some interesting hubbub about uh, the casting choices of this movie and whether or not there were so many, uh, you know, white British folks in ancient Egypt. Let's put that aside for now. Let's take it as red and just talk about the rest of the movie. I'm going to blow the spoiler horn right now because, well, if you don't know the story of Moses already, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I am, towards the end of this episode, going to give a little bit more specifics about the uh, about the movie itself. So if you don't want to know every little detail, then uh, I'll tell you when to cut out when we get to that. So right off the bat, the atmosphere of the movie is pretty good. So the concept of Moses being an Egyptian prince, which in the story he is, Moses is a... Uh, He's found in the reeds by the Egyptian uh, princess, or whatever they called the not pharaoh uh, woman person at the time, and is raised as a prince of Egypt, um, like a certain other movie of that title. <laughs> so we often think of Moses as one of the uh, patriarchs of Judaism, but in, in reality, he spent the majority of the early part of his life, again, assuming this is a literal, actual, you know, factual story, who knows whether it was or not, but he spent the majority of the early, his early formative years as an Egyptian, of you know, just doing Egyptian stuff. In fact, my church, the Apostolic Joe and I Church, we talk a lot about Moses being an Egyptian. In fact, it's a very important part of the story. I'll read you something. This comes from our institutional narrative, which uh, is an, an older account of uh, the founding of our church. Um, and again, this is uh, the foundational legend of our church, so uh, we're not really making any claims on whether it's factually accurate or not, but it's the legend, and, and here it is. Moses was initiated in Egypt, profoundly versed in the physical, theological, and metaphysical mysteries of the priests. He knew how to profit by these so as to surmount the power of the mages and deliver his companions. Aaron, his brother, and the chiefs of the Hebrews became the depositories of this doctrine. So what we're talking about here is Moses being an Egyptian priest, more or less here, um, who understood all of the mysteries, the Egyptian mysteries, from which a lot of the later Hermetic and other um, Western mystery traditions said to, were said to have sprung. So what this institutional narrative is saying is that Moses, as... Uh, you know, more or less born and bred Egyptian, uh, learned these Egyptian mystery techniques, transmitted them through Judaism to esoteric Christianity, and then on to, you know, Renaissance Europe through all of the various streams. So it's a very interesting bit of story, and I think this movie really kind of captured that idea of uh, Moses as a true Egyptian uh, really well. Another thing I think this movie makes a really good point of hammering home is that, uh, you know, God in this story is kind of a psychopath. So they, the Egyptians are slaves to Egypt for 400 years, and then all of a sudden, in the space of a couple of days, God decides that, oh, well, it's time to fix this problem. And, uh, and recruits Moses to help him, and then commits, you know, genocide on, you know, thousands of children, <laughs> because God's mad. Um, so, this is another uh, interesting argument towards Gnosticism, I think, uh, where you have this supposedly omnipotent being who can literally kill at, you know, at, in, in an instant, thousands of children, which is, you know, pretty shitty, if you ask me, uh, but then can't do something more direct to get the Egyptians out of Egypt. Um, you know, that's a pretty demiurge kind of thing to do, don't you think? The filmmakers did, for the most part, almost exactly what I thought they were going to do. They took all of the plagues and the miracles, and except for one, and made it so that you could interpret them 
as having completely mundane causes. Uh, you know, so the, the one plague caused by some random environmental thing that just happened to happen uh, led to the next plague, which led to the next plague, and so on and so forth. Until they get to the point where the Passover happens and God kills uh, millions of babies because of reasons, and, uh, you know, that is hard to explain by just natural causes alone. So that one's kind of a miracle, and they'll give you that. But even then, even in the parting of the Red Sea... You could say that there was a tidal force or an earthquake or something, and I've seen this on a lot of documentaries uh, over the past several years where they try and use scientific reasons to explain how that, those plagues in the Bible uh, could have come about. And I think they intentionally drew upon a lot of those sources uh, in order to create a little bit of ambiguity into the sources of, of the plagues, and nobody really knows. They didn't play this up as much as I thought they, they might have. Maybe this is in the deleted scenes, but they, they nobody really knows if Moses was actually talking to God or if he was just hallucinating. I expected they would have gone more in the direction of, oh, these things can all be explained away, and, you know, they all have completely rational explanations if you look at it through, you know, modern science. The storytelling overall was pretty good. The, the story flowed, the visuals were stunning, uh, and it was you know, a good ride, and I didn't find myself at any point checking out or, you know, wondering why they made one choice or another, and you know, so overall, I would say it's not a terrible movie. Uh, I wouldn't bother, like, I wouldn't bother to see it 3D because the 3D effects weren't spectacular. Um, they were subtle, they were good, but, you know, nothing to write home about, nothing that you'd really miss if you only watched it in 2D, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bother with the extra money. Overall, I give it three Archons out of five. Not a bad movie, not a great movie, but, you know, it's about the Bible, so I figured I'd go and see it for you so that you don't have to if you don't want to, and, you know, make your own decisions. One final thought you probably saw on Facebook or some other source uh, very recently, the Gnostic NYC network has been purchased by the Apostolic Joe and I Church and is now becoming the Gnostic Wisdom Network, and I wanted to just put a little bit of a personal spin on this. So well, the main reason why this happened is because when I was living in Massachusetts, I founded St. Sarah's Parish for the Apostolic Joe and I Church. That was going along fine. Uh, Father Donald, then Deacon Donald, came up and was uh, came to Boston and was helping me out. Um, my job transferred me to New York. I went to New York for a while. Deacon Donald took over the parish, became Father Donald. He's doing fine. He's still doing the parish. Everything's great. Uh, and then when I was in New York, I founded St. Martin's Parish. When I moved back from Massachusetts a few years ago, <coughs> St. Martin's Parish closed down. Father Donald was doing fine up here in Boston, and I didn't have a specific church job. Now, the leadership of the church said, hey, look at what Father Tony's doing over here with these videos. These are very useful for everybody, but for our church uh, also, um, being good, uh, a good source of information for people who want to know more about us. And so, 
they thought it would be a good idea to uh, to buy it and me kind of along with it. And so that's kind of the reason why all this went down. Um, less and less of what I was doing with the Gnostic NYC network had anything to do with the local New York stuff anyway. And so that's kind of, uh, you know, it kind of led to all of this happening. And um, it's going to be a good change. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to get some additional resources that I didn't have before in order to do more stuff and, and contact more people. And, and so I think that overall this is going to be very positive. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll see where the future takes us. But for the, for the most part, you're not going to notice much of a difference. Everything's going to go business as usual. The uh, Talknosis shows will continue as they've always continued. Uh, I'm going to get around to editing the three <laughs> uh, Lost Word shows that I have sitting around that I have not yet edited because I've been busy with sale of the network stuff for several months and, and some other projects. But um, now that all that's wrapping up, I'm getting that underway, and so I've got three more episodes for you coming out, coming your way for The Lost Word, and uh, we've got some interesting guests and topics coming up for Talknosis also. So uh, stay tuned for all of that, and I hope that uh, it, it isn't another several months between vlogs, because I, I like doing these even though I don't really like editing them very much, but uh, everybody says that they like it the way that I edit it, so I'm going to continue to do it that way, and um, you know, if you're skilled at editing and you want to help out, I'm always interested in, in more help here at the network, at the new Gnostic Wisdom Network, so uh, shoot me an email, would you? I'll see you later.